Okay, so I want to spend a few moments talking about direct variation and how this relates to linear functions. So we have direct variation. And what is that? Well, usually it follows an equation of the form y equals kx. And I'll explain this in a moment. It's, it's actually quite straightforward. But k here is usually referred to as your constant of variation. But if you don't like this version of the formula, you can rewrite it as y equals mx, right? Where m is equal to your slope. And slope and constant of variation are the same thing. Now here, notice it's not mx plus b, because when you have direct variation, right, you could write it like this, but b is equal to zero. That's one of the major features of a direct rela variation relationship. Now you've heard this phrase before and speak about it quite frequently if you've used the word proportion, right? A proportional relationship, right? If you say that a relationship is proportional, you're talking about direct variation. What does that mean? Proportional relationship just means that you can always multiply x by some amount to get y. All right, that's how we're looking at it here with these, um, with the domain and range or input output of a function. So here, if we set up a table, right? So our orange function will represent a proportional function. X and y. Pick any x's and y's. Say zero, one, two, three. Right? If we're always multiplying by three, what would happen? And that's all we're doing. If we're always multiplying x by three, well, zero times three is zero. One times three is three, and two times three is six, and three times three is nine. So this is a proportional or direct variation relationship, and the equation would just be y is always equal to x times three, or three x, and our constant of variation or our slope is three. Now, if we were to graph this, right? If you set up a graph, what's going to happen? What are some major features that we should notice? about this graph. Well, if you plot the points, I think you'll notice some interesting things. Our origin here is at 0, 0. Then we have 1, and then 1, 2, 3. Plot this in zero and uh, in orange. Let me just set the scale real quick. We go 1, 2, and 3. On the y-axis, right, I'll go, I'll go up by 3s just to keep it quick. Um, so we go 3, 6, 9, 1, 2, Three. So let's plot this. This we have zero zero. That's our first point. One three, and two six, and three nine. What I notice right away is that if I connect these points, I do get a straight line. So it's a linear function. And that makes sense. It follows because it has a constant rate of change or a constant slope. And y equals three x. But the other big feature, like we talked about, is that the y-intercept is zero. Right. And that has to be the case because if it was anything else anything at all, it would not be directly proportional. You'll have to multiply by x and then add or subtract something. Let me show you a quick example. Let's say we change our function slightly, right? Instead of x going to y as it just did, this time, right, we'll have the same inputs, 0, 1, 2, 3, but we'll have 1, right, 4, and then 5, and then, well, sorry, <laughs> um, 7, and then 10. What's going to happen now? Well, this point right here, we've added a little bit, right? We're at 0, 1 now, not 0, 0. And 1, 4, not 1, 3. And 2, 7. And 3, 10. And even though it's slight, the change here, it's not dramatic, it's slight, right? We have another linear function, but what's the difference? You can't just multiply x by any number anymore to get to y. If you look at it, right, in the first case, we have to multiply by something and then add 1, right? Multiply by something and add 1. Here, you do multiply by 4 to get from 1 to 4. But here, you can't multiply by 4 to get from 2 to 7 and from 3 to 10, right? There is no number, no single number that you can multiply by x to get to y. When that happens, you have a non-direct variation or non-proportional relationship. The equation is just y equals 3x because the rate of change is constant, it's still linear, but the rate of change is constant, but the whole proportion itself is not constant. Excuse me, the whole function itself is not constant. And that can happen. The slope can be constantly changing, going up by 3 each time. But you not only need to multiply by a number, but add a value, in this case, 1 each time. Right? So it's 3x plus 1. When you have those two steps involved, it's not a direct variation. 
And it doesn't, doesn't mean it's not linear. It's still a linear relationship. The slope is still constant. But the whole function itself is not a direct variation anymore. All right, hope this helps.